Austin was born in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida on December 21st, 1996. Growing up, Austin's parents had very different ideas of how a child should be raised. Austin's mom, Nina, wasn't someone who felt the need to hover over her kids. She had a pretty solid relationship with both Austin and her younger daughter, Haley. But Austin and his dad, Wade, didn't get along. Wade was a really forceful and strict parent. People described him as a nice man, but she said he had a temper. When Austin was 13, his parents got a divorce. Not long after the split, both Nina and Wade got into new relationships, which had to be a tough thing for the kids to witness. Once he graduated high school, he applied and was accepted to Florida State University as a biology major. He was interested in health and medicine and his dad was in the medical field, so it kind of seemed like he should go that route. But Austin later changed his major to exercise science because he wanted to become a dietitian. This is where the body obsession started kicking into high gear. He mentioned in his journal that he felt that no one really knew him and wanted to become well known. He didn't know what his path was and was begging for guidance. He needed a purpose in his life. Emotionally, Austin was really vulnerable and was finding it hard to cling to normalcy. His Google search history was filled with searches like, how do I know I'm not crazy? And common traits of good people. He was trying his best to come back to reality. Everyone could see the switch in Austin, but something completely overtook him in the final weeks leading up to the attack. He wasn't even a fraction of the same person everyone knew him to be. And this is when Austin started to believe he was Jesus. He thought he harnessed special abilities and was immortal. On the flip side, however, he also believed the devil was watching him and waiting to end his life. Austin's family had a history of mental illnesses and schizophrenia was one of them. Austin also developed a really terrible sleep habits sleeping just two hours a night. And at other times when he was experiencing extremely high mood levels, he wouldn't sleep at all. No sleep plus hallucinations. This guy was living in a constant state of fear. A few days before the horrific event took place, Austin's dad brought him to a weapons show where he brought a switchblade. He asked multiple people at the convention to give him tips and tricks on how to protect himself. This is at the same time that Austin had started believing he was half dog and half human and telling his family this information. It was evident that he was just unwell but people didn't know how to help him. But then on August 15th, 2016, Austin woke up with a lot of energy and decided to go for a run on the beach. When he got there, he got down on all fours and began to run across the shore. After this, he went to his dad's house to get the car keys. As soon as Wade, Austin's dad, saw him, he knew something was wrong. Austin was acting erratically, and his dad offered him to calm him down, but instead of taking it, he threw the bottle on the ground, demanding his car keys. Wade didn't give up the keys because he wasn't in the right state of mind to be behind the wheel. This set Austin off immediately. He climbed onto the hood of his dad's car, started jumping up and down, screaming at the top of his lungs. So his dad handed him over the car keys. Later that night, Austin, Haley, Wade, and Wade's girlfriend went out to get dinner at Duffy Sports Grill in Jupiter, Florida. Austin ended the dinner abruptly because he said he felt trapped. He marched out of the restaurant and went to his mom's house. Once again, when he arrived at his mom's place, she could tell that he was really going through it. He wasn't on meds, but was acting like he was. She drove him back to Duffy's, which turned into another huge blow-up argument involving Wade grabbing Austin by the shirt and yelling at him. Austin was sick and was tired of being told what to do by his dad, who pushed him around his entire life. He clenched his fist like he was about to fight Wade, but before anything could happen, Austin broke away from the situation and started wandering down the streets. He ran in and out of traffic, not fully present in reality, and because of all that, he thought he was unstoppable. Austin's confidence soon shattered when he spotted a dark figure that looked to be following him. Austin then ran to the garage of John and Michelle's home. John and Michelle were in their 50s. They had been together for 10 years, and both had successful careers that allowed them to retire early and enjoy their lives. Austin saw the light from the garage and ran to it for help. He thought the dark, shadowy figure was still following him. And because of this, he was screaming bloody murder. This scared the two of them, and Michelle started yelling back at Austin, probably for him to chill the out. But once Austin saw Michelle screaming at him and waving her hands, this flipped a switch in his head. Something told him that she was an evil being and he needed to end her life. Austin was carrying the blade he brought from the weapon show and began to use it on Michelle. He impaled her multiple times before turning his attention to John and doing the same. Their neighbor, Jeff, heard the commotion and ran over to help, but Austin turned on Jeff and gave him multiple injuries. By the grace of God herself, somehow Jeff was able to run back to his house despite having multiple head, 
neck, and back injuries. He immediately picked up the phone and called 911. Meanwhile, Austin found a machete in the garage and began to use that on John and Michelle. Later on, investigators would also find a pair of scissors. Now, at some point during the attack, Austin drank a bottle of liquid he found in the garage. It was a bleach-like chemical that he believed to be alcohol. And at midnight, Austin's mom made a phone call to the police. She was worried for Austin's safety due to his strange behavior and running off from dinner two separate times, but had no idea that Austin had committed these horrifying acts when she called. When the police arrived at John and Michelle's house, Austin had taken off all of his clothes, made animal noises, and continued to attack the couple's bodies. But when officers approached, they were even more horrified to see Austin biting into John's face. It took a dog, a taser, multiple police officers, and a kick to the head to finally remove Austin because he was clung to the body so tightly. This is such a difficult case to learn about because while I'm not excusing what Austin did to this innocent couple, there were so many signs that led up to this point. I mean, it was so evident that he was unwell and needed help, but didn't get it. Sadly, John and Michelle did not survive their extensive list of injuries and were pronounced deceased at the scene. Austin was transported to a hospital because he had also sustained some pretty intense injuries. He had burned his throat from drinking that chemical from the garage, his liver and kidney both failed and lots of external and internal injuries. On the way to the hospital, he groaned that he had eaten something bad. When asked what it was that he ate, he replied, humans. He continued to have his manic episode at the hospital and was so all over the place that he needed to be sedated. This led police to believe that this was a substance induced incident, but a toxicology report proved their suspicion wrong. Wade knew what had really caused this though. He told the media it stemmed from their family's history of schizophrenia. On September 7th, 2016, Wade Haruf appeared on the Dr. Phil show. He said he couldn't excuse what Austin did, but that he generally was a caring person. Something had just gone so, so wrong. After weeks of recovery in the hospital, two months to be exact, Austin left the hospital bed. On October 3rd, he was transferred to jail while he awaited trial for two counts of first degree murder, attempted murder, and burglary. Psychological evaluations were performed on Austin and he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, acute manic episodes with psychotic features, and lycanthropy delusions. Which makes sense because Austin couldn't recall much about the attack besides believing that he was a dog when biting Michelle and John. A prosecution psychiatrist declared that Austin was legally insane during the attack. Austin's legal team was planning to argue he was not guilty because of insanity, which has now been postponed indefinitely, it seems. He's being treated for schizophrenia while he's in jail. If he is found not guilty, he will be admitted into the state mental hospital to get the treatment he needs. But that, my friends, is the case of Austin Haruf, the cannibal frat boy. So I gotta know, what do you all think about this case? For me, I think this guy was incredibly mentally unwell and it went unchecked for a really long time. He was either totally unaware of what he was doing or doing it to protect himself somehow. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, let me know what you all think and I'll see you next time.